Hi, this is John with Sysenge Quick. Today I'll show you how to bootstrap the Salt Minion using Salt SSH. The first thing we need to do is go into the Serve Salt directory. If you don't have one, you're going to want to create one because this is where all the configuration for your Salt State modules are going to live. I'm going to make a subdirectory called Bootstrap, and in the Bootstrap directory, we're going to make our first state file. The default state file in a directory is the init.sls file. If you don't specify a different state file, this is the one that will be run. So, inside here, we can specify salt states. So, let's go over to the salt stack documentation. We'll go over to the menu, go to products, salt OSS, documentation, We'll scroll down to Configuration Management and open All Salt Modules. These are all of the state modules, which are the functions we can use to describe the state we want our server to be in. So, salt states aren't so much configuration changes as they are ensuring the state of a system. In other words, salt will make whatever changes are necessary to get your system into the correct state based on how you define those states. So, we need to find some state modules. So, let's talk about what we're actually going to do. We need to install, configure, and run the salt minion daemon. To do that, we need to install the salt repo, install salt minion, configure the salt minion, and configure and start the service. So the first thing we're going to want to do is find a state module that will help us with packages. So I happen to know there's a package repo, and inside this, this is how we do management of apt and yum package repositories. So if we open up this, we will see there's a couple of functions inside the package repo, absent and managed. Absent would mean we don't want this repo. Managed would mean we do. So first, we set up an identifier. I'm going to call this the salt repo. You put a colon after it to mark it as an identifier. When you go to the next line, you need to indent two spaces because this is a YAML document. Then we're going to specify which salt state we're going to use. In this case, it's package repo.managed. Again, we use a colon because this is also an identifier getting us into a list. Next, we have a list of properties to pass to the package repo.managed function. So we have a couple of things we're going to want. You can scroll through the properties in here and get an idea of what they are. I'll scroll just a little bit to APT based systems. You can see we're probably going to want a name, and the name is just the complete Debian entry. So let's go ahead and get that from the package repo. So I've gone to repo.saltstack.com. I'll click on Debian, we'll scroll down a little bit, and I want to pin to the major version, and here is the repo line that we need. So we're going to add a property, every property is part of a list, and the list items must be prefixed with a dash. So we're going to say the name is going to be this string that we got from SaltStack. So the next thing is file. This will say if we want a specific file to be used for this salt repo, rather than using the basic etsy apt sources.list. So I'm going to say file is going to be etsy apt sources.list.d saltstack.list. The last thing we'll need is the key, because this repo does need a public key. So we can get the key by downloading it from this URL. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this link, and you can see there's a couple of properties related to keys. There's key ID and key server, and also key URL. Key URL is what we want, because that lets us download a key and use it from there. So we'll do key URL. Now that we have our salt repository, we need to install the salt minion package. So let's go down and make another identifier. In this case, I'm going to call it salt minion. And let's see if there's a salt module that works with packages. Of course there is. It's called the package module. So let's go see what kind of functions are in here. Let's go ahead and use package latest. 
So again, the name is package.latest. Put a colon in there. Now specify the properties. The only property we need is salt minion. So now that we have our salt repo and we've installed the salt minion package, we need to configure the salt minion. So let's make another identifier. I'll call it salt config. And in this case, we want to manage a file configuration. So going back to the state modules, let's scroll up a little bit to see about the file module. Again, we're going to use manage to make sure the file has specific contents. So in this case, we're going to use file.managed. And the name of the file is going to be etsy salt minion.d local.comp because that's the configuration file we're going to use to put our minion properties. Now we need to specify the contents of the file. I'm just going to go ahead and use the contents property and write out the file's contents right in here. But here we go, contents, specify the contents of the file. So we can use contents and I'm going to use that second method here by using the pipe and then indenting everything on the same indentation level everything like there will become part of the file. So I put the pipe in here, indent two more spaces, and now I can begin the file. The two properties we need are location of the master server. In this case, it's 172.16.11 and the identifier. Since we already have identifier from salt SSH, let's go ahead and use that. To do that, we can do a double open curly brace, grains, open bracket, and put it in single quotes ID. Then close those off and close your double open curly brace. So this will be replaced by the ID of the grain. So this will be replaced by the ID that salt SSH has been passed. In this case, it'll become Debian clone. So I'm going to make one more state, the salt service state. And let's go back and look for salt modules based on service. So here's the salt state service. We want to make sure that the service is running. So let's do service.running, and the properties are going to be the name of the service. So in this case, it's salt minion. We want to make sure that it's enabled, and we also want to make sure that if it was already running, that we restart it if our configuration changes. So to do that, we can use the watch property. To do that, we have another list of properties. In this case, we're going to match something based on file. So if this file is changed, we're going to want to restart the service. And there's one more file we'll want to change. And that is the Etsy salt minion underscore ID. Remember that when we set up the salt master, we deleted this file because that creates it with the salt minion ID auto generated by the salt minion. This is sometimes okay, but oftentimes it's not what you want, and it will override things you put in your local configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we don't use this either. So I want to make sure that we've deleted this file too. So let's go ahead and delete that file. So to do that, we'll define another state, and we're going to use the file module again, and this time we're going to use the absent function. The absent function simply makes sure a file doesn't exist. So I can do file.absent, and then the name of the file is going to be etsy salt minion underscore id. And let's go ahead and test it out. To run a salt state, we need to use the state.apply function. So sudo salt ssh debian clone state.apply and the name of the state. In this case, it's the bootstrap state. And if we don't specify anything further, like the diff, like the file, it will use the init.sls state. So let's go ahead and see how that works. So we can see the summary. It says four succeeded and one failed. So let's take a look and see what happened there. If we scroll to the top, we can see that our first state failed. And the reason is that Python apt is not installed. So we have to have the Python apt package to be able to configure app repositories. Everything else succeeded because there are salt minion packages in the Debian repos, although they are a little old, so I would not recommend using them. 
when it installed the salt minion, it already installed the Python apt package. So let's go ahead and rerun this and see what happens. This time you can see all five succeeded and changed was two. That means three of the changes were not necessary. That's because we already had local.com in the correct state. Minion ID was not present, so it didn't matter anymore. We've already running the salt minion, didn't need to restart it. So let's go ahead and restart the salt minion so we have our new version running. So we'll do sudo salt ssh debian clone service.restart salt minion. There we go, return true. So everything should be good now. So let's take a look and see if we have a new salt minion. We can do sudo salt dash key dash capital L and we can see we have an unaccepted key, the Debian clone key. So sudo salt key dash A, and specify which key I want to add. So now if I do sudo salt Debian clone test.ping, I get true. So we have set up the salt minion on our Debian clone. And that's how you bootstrap the salt minion using salt SSH. Thanks for watching. See you next time.